I've always considered New Zealand, and I still do, a, a really thriving country, a country full of life. But we're draining the life and leaving nothing for our young. Um, and that, that, that is sad, you know, that we leave them this. You know, we, we should be giving them a life to look forward to, not to fight for. You know, I'm eating toast for, for dinner. Well, um, you know, so my son can have proper food. Every month it's like, is it the power this month or is it the phone this month? I was on unemployment benefit, couldn't get a job. I was 59. I had applied for 107 jobs. I didn't get one and I had two interviews. I know one lady and uh, she didn't even have two dollars for a loaf of bread to feed her kids. She sat on her bed and cried because she didn't have two dollars. And I know this for a fact because that lady was me. I get about two eighty nine a week and my rent here is two fifteen, so that leaves me with not that much. Um, after by necessities like food. It's like I'm kind of forced to, to pick between being able to eat or being able to uh, seek the help that I need um, to better myself. It's not something that you would wish to do. And when you do have to lean on uh, welfare, you would hope that you wouldn't struggle so much or you wouldn't, it wouldn't keep you in poverty, but it does. What people that are apply for a benefit or have never been to work in income before have to realise is that it's a toxic environment. They are just treated really inhumane. First they're requested to present ID before they can actually enter the offer. No privacy. Um, I, I once had a security guard stand behind me in Winds and I turned around and told him to go because you know like what I have to say has got nothing to do with him. There's definitely a feeling of humiliation when I do go into a, a Winds office and that's solely because of um, the opinions and stigmas around people on the benefit. The case manager kept, well, talking to another case manager kept um, referring to me as he and him. And then once the case manager came back, back I explained that I'm non-binary and I use they, them pronouns. But then the case manager just kept, you know, misgendering me. They're very cold, the way they talk to you. Um, if they would just treat you like a person instead of a case number. When you walk into a WINS office, you see a sign and it says, what matters the most, the people, the people, the people. And that's a fucking lie. I know they say he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. I think it's rude of them to even use those words. When you need support from work and income, they are ruthless. And that's putting it politely. I have a daughter and she's homeless. My own child is homeless. These things are happening to us now. Somebody was told that I was dealing with, who was living in a car, was told that not to go on the housing list because they were accommodated. They were accommodated in their car. And so because they're living in a car, they have somewhere to live. We've had people in wheelchairs that have been sleeping on the street. How are they supposed to help themselves if a human doesn't come along and help them out? In one particular area out in South Auckland, in Manurewa, a whole street of at least 30 houses which belonged to Housing New Zealand under MSD were available vacant. And yet, there is a whole vacant lot of people in car parks sleeping in their vehicles and that's not been addressed. So they really are overlooking their responsibilities. If for some reason we uh, lose our benefits for some unknown reason or we uh, uh, get a little part-time job, we could be at risk of becoming um, homeless. And there was no way I was ever going to um, get on the list, or you know, get on the list, let alone get a place. 
and I just thought, wow, do you actually have to be living under a bridge before they put you on the list? I live in a um, place right now that sometimes I will be sitting there in a mice run to pass. But that's the housing today. The prices of homes are out of everybody's reach. The houses are going up, the food's going up, but yeah. you don't see the benefits go up. It's even less than the minimum wage, you know? It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. When I was um, cleared to come back to work by the doctor, they said 20 hours. I'd been here three months and I got a letter from Wins saying, um, your son is turning 14, uh, you now have to work full time. So I rang them and I said, I have a job. Um, I just got the job and they said, no, I'm sorry, you need to get another job. The government needs to change the way it treats beneficiaries. It seems like it's the job of Reckon Income to say, here's a job, take it, get out. It's more detail. It only gives you five hours a week, maybe. There's nothing that says for 40 hours a week, you're guaranteed this Monday to Friday, your family will be sweet, your income will be awesome, and everything is going to be great. It's like you get a job, instead of being saying, oh, good on you, you get punished, you know, like, um, I think I got cut by a hundred dollars and to me that's a lot of money. I was on a tight enough budget as it is, um, but to lose that, that amount made it extra hard for me. Your net income in your hand is not that much better and, and in some instances lower than you would if you were on a benefit. I recently got a text about something to have done. I think it's construction or like something manly like that. And like, look at me, I can't physically do that stuff. In South Auckland, where a man who had had a heart transplant, had a colostomy and was paralysed from the waist down and in a wheelchair, was told by a doctor that work and income wanted him medically tested for work. He was sent to work in a booth in a mall. Now, because of his medical condition, he had to change his colostomy every three or four hours. He was there on his own. He was under such stress that he died. He died because he was forced to go to work. You people out there that call us bludgeons and think, wait till you get on the dole. A poor man can go and be rich and then go back to being poor because they know what it's like, but a rich person cannot go from being rich to poor. Cannot handle it. That's my worry, you know. Got to keep a roof over my head. My landlord is, he, he, he's nice, um, but you know what? They live in Queenstown and this mansion, you know, <laughs> just, yeah, like you never know when it's going to be you. Like I, five years ago, was living very well um, and would never have ever thought that I would be in this situation. I had to deal with a couple of 92 year olds that came out crying because. They were embarrassed in going on the benefit in the first place. I saw them crying in the fish shop because one lady was trying to find 50 cents to buy 50 cents worth of fish for their dinner. On Fridays, we're at Clendon and Manurewa Work and Income Offices. We will see a total of 130 people each Friday across those two offices. When we arrive by, by nine o'clock in the mornings, there is long, long queues of people waiting there for us. Some of them have been there since five, six o'clock that morning. Majority of the people who are there on Fridays are there to access food. The reason there's not enough left is because there's never enough to start with. 